Ivan Eiley here with Hammer in Hand. Now we've got a request for video on some basic machining operations from Colin Wood. And so we're making this video to show you basic lathe operation. The first thing that we're going to get into is bit sharpening because that's going to be important. And then we'll get more into the basics. But I'll start off just by showing you the machine. This is an old Logan 200. And what this machine is, is an old 1940s lathe. It's a small lathe, something you might typically see. As somebody found it a tool sale or estate sale. And so this is a good one for this tutorial. I figure this would be the kind of machine somebody might buy and then be looking for a, a how, to, how to use it type of video. So what you have here is you have your speeds. So you've got your pulleys, your spindles, and your belt. And you've got three different speeds here that you can change between. But then you've also got what's known as your back gears. So just to give you an idea of that, we get our pulley put back over here. Now, if we pull the pin right here, that's going to separate our head from our pulley and we can then pull out and it lifts up our back gears. And so now our back gears are coming in contact. And so that gives us a slower speed. So I'll show you how that works. Here's our lathe spinning with our, with our back gears. So we've got our slower speed. We're basically just adding a transmission. And you got a little, you've got a little uh, trigger down here that holds that in place. So you just push that up. You can slide that back in. That drops your back gears back down out of the way, the cam. So then we just want to put our pin back in. And so this is going to be our slowest speed without our back gears. If we move our belt down to our other side, that would be our faster speeds. So where we're at right now, is going to be about the speed that we want for what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So as far as bit sharpening goes, there's a couple of different things that you want to think about. Now I've made a couple of drawings up real quick to give you a better idea exactly what I'm talking about. So you have your back rake, which is going to be the angle of the top of the bit. So this is if you're looking at the side of the bit. So here you'd have a positive, a negative, and a zero would be none. Now this would be more for high force cutting, a negative. You pretty much want to stay away that stay away from that with a smaller lathe. So and this is just to give you an idea. Here's your side rake. That angle is going to matter because that's going to affect chip dispersal which is also going to affect the heat as you go. The nose radius is something I typically do on a bit. It's going to help keep your bit from cracking, chipping, or wearing out faster. Now, another thing that you want to think about when it comes to grinding your bit is going to be the clearance angle. Now if we're coming, this would be our bit here, if we're coming at a piece that we're turning this would be our turning. This would be our facing. You want to make sure that you've got clearance if you're trying to make a shoulder. So that's another thing to think about as you go. You don't want to have your bit at 90 degrees to make a 90 degree cut. You want to make sure that you have that clearance so that you're not chattering. So with the bit we got here, we've got, we got a little bit of rounding on the nose and you can see We've got our chip dispersal angle there, and we've got our angle cut in the front to meet up nicely with our piece so that the only spot that we want to be making contact with is with our cutting edge. We don't want any other part of the, the bit to be rubbing on what we're trying to do. Now, another thing when you're grinding a bit, if you're using a high speed steel, um, you can use holders, you can use you know all kinds of things to, uh, to basically get a lot you know, better angles and, and what have you, but it's really not that necessary. I always just grind my bits by hand 
and I mean you can see that here but even where there's mistakes or rounded edges if I didn't have the grinding stone squared off nice or uh, or uh, you know nice and clean on the edge then it's really not that big of a problem the, the biggest thing is where your bit is cutting that's the part that you want to make sure you have the right angles on the looks of the rest of the piece aren't as critical the other thing is, is if you're using a high speed steel if you start to see bluing from getting too hot while you're grinding you don't typically have to worry about that with a high speed steel because high speed steel it'll take over a thousand degrees before you're actually going to knock the temper out of a high speed steel so even if you see bluing while you're grinding that's actually okay so that's something you don't have to worry about so the next thing is going to be getting your bit centered up this is a three jaw chuck this is our chuck key so a good way to do this is basically just to bring your jaws all together once you've got your jaws all brought together then you can take and bring your bit over to find your center point And then once we've got it about in a good spot in our center, then we can tighten down our tool holder. Let me just double check it here. And then we tighten down our bit holder. So it should be good there. And we've cut off a piece of aluminum just so that we can show you what it is that we're doing here actually run you through it instead of just talking about it so you can see how the process goes and what you should be looking for we'll spin it up and we're pretty centered there three jaw chuck self-centering but they're still not always going to center perfectly so you might have to make a little bit of adjustment to it to uh, make sure that you're actually spinning true depending especially on what you're doing but this is good for what we're doing here so what we want to do is we just want to come in and we're just going to take off a small amount here and you can see that angle that we have coming off the back is allowing our curls to drop back off of our bit as we go and that way they're not coming forward and getting caught up in our chuck and our spinning components and again that's going to help get the heat away as, as well because our heat is basically moving away with our chips as we go and so that would be turning and this would be our facing so we can do turning and facing with the same bit depending on again what it is exactly that we're doing and the reason I'm not giving you specific angles for how to cut a bit is depending on what you're doing depending on the type of material that you're using there's going to be different ways that you would want to cut your bit but a bit cut like this it's typically going to be good for softer materials and steels, things like that. And there we go. And you can see, it's a good way to make sure that your bit is centered as you go. You can see here, and we didn't really end up with much of a nipple at all. And if you have a nipple there, it just means that your bit's running a little too low. And you want to bring your bit up a little bit higher to get it centered. So that's basic cutting on the lathe. Now there's a couple of other things just to point out real quick aside from just the uh, just your back gears and your speeds and how to cut your bit and again this is a basic tutorial so we're not going to go into too many details about these things but just to give you a, a little bit of an understanding of some of the different things you're going to have for instance an automatic feed and so your automatic feed is that would be your gears here in the back of the lathe. Now you can change out these different gears to get different speeds for threading and things like that. Typically you'll have a chart or something in the door of your lathe or in a manual that would explain to you what gears you would need where for what speeds. And you can see here in this door I've got the threading chart. This particular model. But we're just going to leave that where it is just to give you an idea of how that works so now you can see we're disengaged so our heads just free spinning now 
if we engage our gear set to our head, now we're spinning our piece that runs our automatic feed. So we can just engage automatic feed, and now we're pulling in. And we're pulling in at the speed based on the gears that we have. You can also use this just for cutting if you just want a more consistent cut or you just want it to be a little cleaner, having a hard time doing that. And you can engage and disengage your feed just with just with the handle while you're actually running running your gear still, while the machine's still running, you can disengage your disengage and engage your automatic feed. And there's also an automatic feed to move in and out. So you can face with an automatic feed or you can turn with an automatic feed. The other thing I wanted to talk about real fast was your tailstock. And there's a couple of different things that you can do using your tailstock. Like, let's say we've got a really long piece that we want to turn. If you've got it hanging away out from the chuck, you're going to have a lot of end lash. Basically, the end isn't going to be supported. So for something like that, what you would want to use is known as a, a center. This is a live center, which means it's on bearings. It spins. Now, to change out the end of your tailstock, you can just back it up and it'll pop that loose. And then you can just pop your next piece in. And so now we're good there. By tightening here, you're locking the tailstock down to the bed of the lathe. So, if we wanted to use the live center, what we would do is first we would shut off our automatic feed. <laughs> and then we would come in and we're going to just make ourselves just a little pocket. Now, in order to get a bit in there, we're going to have to change our angle a little so that we can get that cut in there good. And once we've got a little pocket for our live center to sit in, which normally you would want to go a little bit deeper with the pocket, but again, I'm just trying to give you an idea of how all this works. Also, we wouldn't need to use a live center on something this heavy and short either, but just to give you an idea of how everything works, then we would bring our live center up to our piece, and then we'd want to tighten down our tailstock to our bed. Just snug that up. And once we have that snug, then we can bring our tail stack and our live center into our piece. And now as we run, we have support on the back side of our piece. So we don't have it trying to move up and down as we're turning it. That also comes in very handy if you're doing knurling or something, which we'll cover later in a different video. Now other things you can do with the tailstock, obviously, I just pulled the the Jacobs chuck off of there. But let's say you wanted to drill out a piece through the center. You could take and just put your chuck on there. And now you can change out your drill bits, bring it in, lock it, feed in to drill out the center of your piece as you go. Um, it helps if you're boiling your drill bit as you're drilling through the center of something just because you're creating heat that isn't getting dispersed very well and not just on a lathe but on any equipment even if you have just cheap drill bits you'd be surprised how well they'll last and actually how good of a job they'll do just with a little lubrication cutting lube helps with a lot of this stuff same as when you're trying to tap something but especially with drill bits the, the biggest problem is heat once you get this hot if you lose temper in your drill bit, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to take the hardness out of it if you get it too hot. Once the hardness is gone out of it, it's going to dull. And even if you resharpen it, it's still going to dull a lot quicker than it would have if you just would have kept it cool in the first place. And oil is a good way of doing that. Another thing you want to remember is if you've got long hair, get it up in a bun or under a cap or something. Long sleeves, you want to keep them away from this head as this thing's spinning. If it catches anything, it could pull you right into it. And that's something you don't want to find out about the hard way. But other than that, I think that pretty much covers the basics of how to use a small metal lathe. So 
If you have any questions or if we didn't cover anything that you wanted to know about or maybe didn't cover anything in enough detail or maybe you wanted some more detail, just go ahead and shoot us a message. We'll get back to you. We could maybe even make another video covering an aspect of, of what's going on here that you would like to see. So I think that's it. Happy machining.